So now that I've done it that way, I'm free to try to get the rest of these in by making turns like this and not disrupt these. And here's what I'm going to try to do. The main challenge of this is eliminating confusion because it's easy to get turned around and have to start all over. So I'm going to put one more corner in and then I'm going to have to put the three that are left in at the same time. Because if I move this, I've got this, this, and this that can all be affected by one dino move. So which one should I do? Well, let's stick with the green and I'm going to want to do another green side in the appropriate place. So let's see what greens are already here. Here's a green and red. Is this the proper green and red? And yeah, this green can come up here, this red can come over here. So let's recreate this. I'm gonna put in another green, but this green, if this green comes up to here and this red comes down to here, then it's gonna to have to be a green and yellow to match up with this. So where is a green and yellow right over here? This green and yellow can comfortably come right to here. So turn it, bang, there it is. Green and yellow. Now what I wanna do is let's R-I-D-I-R-D this until this is up, and this is probably gonna um, switch on me also. So R-I-D-I-R-D, R-I-D-I-R-D, that's one, R I D I. R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. And that's two. Okay, now uh, we're good. Okay, so this is up here. Now I wanna find the red and yellow. Red and yellow is right over here. So I wanna move this, get this into here, and how am I gonna do that? Well, I could just manually move it to here, like so. and over here. So I can move this in. Am I gonna destroy any of my other dino pieces, dino centers, corners? Not sure what to call it anymore. And the answer is no, because uh, it was two moves, so this was brought in to position. So all of these will be fine. So I'm just gonna go splat. This is now in, and let's move this back into position over here. Okay, so my base moves are this, this is now in position. You can see that this is okay, this is okay, and this is okay. So all of our positions are correct. And now what we're left with is this here can now deal with these remaining corner pieces of a three by of a two by two with complete impunity. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, try to eliminate confusion, because this is where a lot of the frustrations can happen. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is let's put in the green one here. Let's start working on that. First, we'll, um, we'll try to move the green ones on, on the side here. It's just gonna to be too confusing to try to do it uh, in any other way. I'd like to take this, I'd like to move it over to here. So to do that, I'm gonna move this up here, do a corner swap, and then move it back to our U, to our UI to R, turn to R, UI to R, U to R, move this here, and after I did my corner swap, I can now comfortably move it back. The advantage of doing it this way is even if I get lost, I can still just match these up and sort of take it where I left off. So this is up here now. It's up here, but it's not, it's not facing up, but that's okay because I want to add the green one. I want to add this to here. And there's only one choice of what this can be. There's no confusion there. Um, so I know that this isn't right because it's not going to match with this green. And this green can only take that. This has to be turned to here. So how am I going to do that? Well, you guessed it, R-I-D-I-R-D -I -I -R it. It's going to offset this, offset this, and offset that. We don't really care about this. But let's just turn this around. R-I-D-I-R. D, that's one, R, I, R, I, D, I, R, D, that's one, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, and that's two. And now we can move this in. Now, I'm not gonna R, I, D, I, R, I'm not gonna move another one in and try to R, I, D, R, D this because I'm gonna take this move it into place, and this automatically corrects. 
Fantastic. It's geometry in action. In any case, this now is turned where we want it to be. What I want it to do now, actually these, these two are in, I want to turn this up, move this up, because I don't want to move this out anymore. Now this one kind of got messed up, but we can we have a way of fixing that. So I'm going to R-I-D-I-R-D this until this is up. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. That's good. That's one. Now what about moving this in and moving this one around too? Well, let's move this into place. This was just one turn. If I move this into place, let's try this one. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. That's one. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. And now that's up. Move this in. And this is all okay here. And now I'm just going to double turn this here. And as you can see, all is right with the world. Everything was brought in. See, now, so now we take a look at what we're doing. We're moving this one here. <clears throat> Everything else is brought in. So now I have this one where these two are in. What I want to do, my overall goal, is to match two from all these three corners, two pieces. Um, of all these three corners in so that I can take the slices here and just move them into position. So this is in. So what two corners come into here? Well, it might behoove us to just put the red one in. So I'm going to put the red one just like this. Okay? This is red. Now, what exactly do we have here? We've got two potentials over here and The question is, which one do we want to keep? Do we want to keep this one, or do we want to keep this one? This one facing down. Because whatever I turn here, it's going to misplace this. So do I want this one to, uh, um, to be the one that's the wild card that's kind of moving around? Well, this will be a blue, orange, and yellow. We have a blue, red, and yellow, which means, yeah, that's what we want. So by turning it this way, this is what we want. This is the configuration that we want where we, where we have one slice to go. And this is the configuration that I want here where we have one slice to go. So it's not these two that I'm looking for because this would be um, orange, gray, and blue. We already have an orange, gray, and blue. We don't need that. So it's not here that needs to be facing out of the way. It's here. This is what we need. So what I want to do is I want to move it to where this is down here. So that means R-I-D-I-R-D-ing this until this is down here. R-I-D-I-R-D R-I-D-I-R-D And there it is. Ready to go. So this, this can go now. Again, if we're kind of freaked out about um, everything else, well, we can, we can make our turns as needed. But let's let's take a look here. So this is up. This is positioned correctly over here. What about this? I see two grays here. This will be a gray, blue, and orange. And I see a gray, red, and here. Here's a gray, blue, and orange. So this, well, actually this is a gray, blue, and red. This is gray, blue, and orange. So this is correct. So what we have now is we have a situation where all of these are lined up to where these dino moves are just going to move these slices in conjunction with the proper corners. So this is where it needs to be, and this is where it needs to, um, where it needs to be, rather this over here. So now we have to match these slices into the proper corners. Well, this one takes a orange and gray. Here's an orange and gray over here. This one takes the blue and red, which is here, and this one takes the yellow and orange, which is here. So all I've got to do is go bang. And having done that, this is lined up, this is lined up, this is lined up. So I've recreated all of my corners for 2x2. Two two. Now, that went pretty smoothly. 
um, that didn't seem, there was a little bit of uh, issues, but really all that you had to do was adjacent corner swaps and RIDRDs, understanding what happens with, with the puzzles with that. The reason why this went smoothly was the organization of my approach. Okay, if the fact that I approached it this way, I didn't confuse putting different pieces, complementary pieces, and finding myself in impossible parodies. So let's just do a standard 2x2 two two solve and see if there's any other issues that are born out of this process. Any other parodies of reduction, because ultimately I did a dyno reduction to a 2x2. Two two. Usually you reduce evens to odds, this one you reduced it into an even. So we'll go upside down here. This belongs here. Now we're going to go ahead and R-I-D-I-R-D these up. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. That was one set. Moving this here. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. And uh-oh, something went wrong. This is not correct. And the reason is, if you were counting, you saw that I only did one RIDRD after I only did one over here. So it couldn't work. I had to do two. So let's do the second one, because I know that the second RIDRD set will get the bottom back, but we'll end up with this. We'll end up with this bit of impossibility, this bit of parity, which we know from Law of Cubes could never happen with this. So this is one of the things that are potentially born out of the solution. So what am I going to do about this? How am I going to get out of this? Aside from plucking out the magnets and putting it back in, what will be my strategy to get out of this strange and interesting parody born out of this dyno 2x2? Two two? What do you think? Did you think about it? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to use dyno moves to slowly but surely rotate this back. So what I need to do is I need to take this piece and I need to, I need to put it up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out over here, bang, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this down by doing RIDRD moves and bring this in. Now this piece is going to be sacrificed for the time being. So RIDRD until this piece is down here, until this blue and red is down here to be replaced by this piece. So. Here we go. Now understand something too. You know what else is going to happen when I do an RIDRD? If I put this here, this is going to be out of whack. So in order to get this back, I have to move this over and do another set of RIDRDs to get this back. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do that, but I have to make sure that the green and red finds its way back here. It doesn't matter to me what happens with this side over here. So blue and red down here, and I have to make sure that these two green and red pairs are okay here. So R-I-D-I-R-D, R-I-D-I-R-D. So this is correct, but this is messed up. So what I'm going to do is move this over here. I know it was one cycle that did that, so two cycles should get this back. Even if I didn't remember this or memorize this, I know two cycles of the RIDIRDs are going to get that back. So RIDIRD, RIDIRD, that's one cycle. RIDIRD, RIDIRD. D, that's two cycles, so I know, even without looking, is that the green and red are going to be back, which it is. So now I move this back in over here, and now I'm ready to do my evil plan. Take this, and move this into this position over here. Bang. Now that I've done that, what I want to do is I want to take this, and move this in proper conjunction with this over here. So how am I going to do that? Well, when I move this back, this blue is going to end up over here. This blue is going to end up over here. So what I want to do is I want to make it to where this is now going to end up back over here. So that means doing another set of RIDIRDs until this is back over to here. So we'll go ahead and do that. R-I-D-I-R-D. R-I-D-I-R-D. All right, this is here, and that was only one set, so I'm going to move this here, and do two sets of RIDIRDs this time. R-I-D-I-R-D, that's one. R-I-D-I-R-D. 
Um, that's one. No, R I D I R D R I D I R D. That's two, and simply bring this back. All right. Having done that, now I'm going to take this and move it here. By learning this stuff, if I had to re-derive it, it would make it almost impossible. Now what I'm going to do is take this and flip it back up to here by R I D I R D it. And even without memorizing this, although now by now we know it's green and red, um, we're going to know how many times we have to use that algorithm to bring it up. So R I D I R D R I D I R D, that's one. So now let's move this over here and do two of those cycles to bring it back. R I D I R D R I D I R D, that's one. R I D I R D R I D I R D, that's two. Bring this back over here, and now you can see I've created a nice dino slice, and I finish off this puzzle once I've brought that in with a dino move. This, and bang, and there you have it. Whoop. Getting back to our dino heritage, it's only fitting that we finish the puzzle with a dino move. So when you have that kind of a rotation there that can happen with this, that apparent parity, I go ahead and do that pattern of going down, re, um, uh, positioning it and then using the law of cubes putting this in repositioning it again until this is back then moving it back and keep doing that until it brings it back in so there you have it really just two algorithms the algorithms of a corner swap and the algorithm of RIDARD simple to use to solve this nice um, comp uh, more complex version of a dyno and a 2x2. Two two. Again, really should be mass produced because just with two algorithms using dynos and using 2x2 two two moves you can solve it. Next up we continue our journey through the corner turners while we stick with a program with dynos but we add a skew potential with some pretty fascinating puzzles. Stay tuned, thanks for watching.